So it is the end of Google. All the patents have been released. All the codes been sent out to everybody. Everyone knows how to rank. I'm joined with James. So you've you've looked at every single line of code, haven't you? Every single one of them, yeah. Can you tell me what's on line 555? 555 is to do with click data. <laughs> <laughs> no. Hi everyone, I'm Kaj Dash an SEO expert with over a decade of experience in transforming online businesses. I've helped hundreds of companies rank number one on Google, driving millions in revenue. I've worked with startups and Fortune 500 companies alike, crafting customized strategies that deliver tangible results. Plus, I've shared my insights on stage at various conferences, guiding thousands on the power of SEO. If you're looking to understand the real value of SEO and how it can skyrocket your business, you're in the right place. If you're looking to grow your organic SEO, make certain to check out the traffic accelerator system the link is in the description it is completely free you will get a complete audit for your website and you can essentially see where you are lacking and where you should be focusing your time and efforts on as well now let's dive in so in seriousness what what's what's your thoughts on on the actual data it's crazy like the information that's in there to be fair i mean there's a lot of people in the groups which is a little bit annoying going, oh it's just there's no difference. It's exactly the same. It's just content and links. And yeah, that's what the algorithm is. But there's a lot of good information in there that kind of confirms things that they've always said isn't correct. There is a sandbox. Yeah. They've always said there's not a sandbox. In there, it says there is a sandbox. It talks about site reputation abuse. It classifies small websites, which I found interesting. Mm -hmm. It marks down exact match domains. Like a lot of these kind of things we kind of knew to a certain degree. And then obviously it talks about content and links and click data and traffic being a really good source. And the a big one about the radius of like you can have you can go too broad on a site. So the one of the big ones in the core cohort group talks about how wide do you go on topic and if you go too wide and outside of your radius it can affect your whole site so let's let's break it down because there's there's quite a lot of things that yeah. um that we that have been mentioned so let's talk about the exact match domains yeah um and what what's what was said about exact match domains? it basically turns about that their issue is that they want to try to promote brands when you get an exact match domain, is that a brand or is that a keyword? And that is the that's the it's difficult part. It's Google. confusing for Google. So a lot of exact match domains, what you can you can end up doing is over optimizing your anchor text, thinking that it's like an exact match anchor, but also it can be seen as being a branded anchor. Now the truth of the matter is, if you want to know the honest truth, we do a lot of in-house testing. And exact match domains work brilliantly. Yeah. And they still today work brilliantly. Right? So even though they say the markdown, and this is where people need to be a little bit careful, because even though it says in the leaks that they try to mark down some exact match domains, there's other factors in the leak that says they promote sites that have got branded search. Mm -hmm. Well, is it a branded search or is it an exact match? Right, so if okay. you can try to make your exact match domains look like a brand as per that, next minute you go from being almost like penalized, penalized, penalized. Hey, hold on a minute. We don't think this is an exact match like keyword. Now we think this is a brand. The minute you can flip it to being it's a brand, it's one of the best brands there's out there because it's getting loads and loads of searches for that keyword. Yeah. So... I'm definitely not one out there saying exact match domains don't work. I'm saying that, yes, Google in there. And something that's also very important within these leaks is there's no weighted system. So you don't know how influential, like how much has it been marked down? Mm -hmm. Is it being marked down 1%, but branded searches get promoted 50%? Well, now you're a plus 49%. Right, yeah. Do you get what I mean? So it's like some people are patent pushers. Mm -hmm. And it's frustrating because, yes, Google have fi filed a lot of Google patents or Google patents on certain things. doesn't mean they're using those mm -hmm. patents and patents. So within these leaks, it doesn't mean they're using all of this. Or 
what weight they might be using it all, but at what weightage are they using it? And people still don't know that, and that's why I still yeah, testing is still very, very, very important. And maybe looking through the main parts of the Google leaks, but it's incredible. It's like the so when then, the Yandex leaks came out. So that's exact match domains. Let's quickly go over the small websites because there's going to be a lot of niche website owners that were already pissed off by Google. And they're probably going to be more pissed off now because it seems like Google's went after them, which I would disagree. My thoughts are on this, and, and let, let me know what you think. I think that every single style of website probably has got its own pros and cons. So if you're a Google News website, you're probably going to get favored to going into the news section. If you are, for example, YMYL, they're probably going to give you a little bit more trust talking about women's health. If you are a small blog, you're probably not going to get either one of those things because you don't have enough authority. Yeah. Would you say that that's probably the case with with what you've seen? Yeah, I mean it's difficult because I've not I've not done enough testing to be fair yet mm. on what even how do you even determine it's a small site? Like, is a small site ten pages, fifty pages, two hundred pages? So if I'm a local plumber in Manchester and I've only got ten pages, what I'm marked down. But I just do plumbing in Manchester. Like, do you know what I mean? And I, I, I've got my contact page about us, my privacy policy and what I do. Like, why do I need 500 pages? I'm not an SEO. I'm just a good plumber in Manchester. Yeah. And some of these pages are still ranking. So even though there's a classifier set for small, what it doesn't say is that if you are deemed to be a small business, we don't rank you. Yeah. Also, what it's saying is, is a classifier. I, I think that that's where everyone jumped the gun. Every, everybody was already pissed off with Google. Yeah. Obviously, helpful content update, this, that, and the other. And they're like, aha, there's 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 something there. Yeah, let's yeah, let's yeah. just burn down Google. And it's not the case. But yeah, the classifier doesn't mean the marketing. That, yeah. It just means that they do certain categorizations. Yeah. And, and it might be that, okay, if the theme has been a small site, maybe we don't put them in. Google News. Mm -hmm. If they're deemed as being a small site, maybe they don't have yet enough trust to rank for these bigger keywords. Yep. But I would say if they're a small site, they might not deserve. To, I've, be. I've, I've, to be honest, I, I looking at all of the, the, the leaks, I think there's a lot of confirmation bias yeah. where it's like things that we kind of knew we were yeah. maybe 70% certain of. We're like, ah, yeah, that makes sense. Um, nav boost. Let's yeah. talk about that. Obviously, there was a lot in there about Navboost. Who, who told you about Navboost? Yeah, so initially? You, did. you did indeed. So um, Navboost, I, th I think I started banging on about it maybe three months ago now. Yeah. Um, it was initially part of um, when Google got taken to court in, in the states. Yeah, that was one of the patents that they essentially had to release to the courts. And basically, for anybody that doesn't know about what Navboost is, is it tracks your click data for 13 months. So let's, I'll, I'll give you a very dumbed down version of an example. If you're an affiliate site and you're selling, let's say sandals, you search best sandals, go through to James's affiliate site, they, they, he then sends you through to a, a Nike, right? So then that click has been tracked. Yeah. And over time, Google will realize that the Nike website is essentially holding that click data. So maybe in time it does over overtake a lot of affiliate sites, which it looks like with the helpful content update and stuff, a lot more e-commerce stores have actually taken taken on the previous rankings. But yeah, what's what's your thoughts on Navboost? So, do you want a knowledge bomb? Go on. Right. So within Navboost and within Click Data, there was something that was exposed, and people might not know about this, but we do a lot of testing with regards to traffic, and traffic is a very, very, very important ranking factor. And I've said this for many years. In my opinion, traffic is the number one ranking factor. However, what was very interesting was, and we kind of knew that this worked because of our testing. If you went and searched for e-commerce SEO in Google, and then you didn't click on to a URL, like you scroll down and came up, while you did click on to it, it doesn't matter whether you do or you don't, but then you, you do a secondary search then, and you search for, Kazra Dash, and then you go and click through to Kazra Dash website, that starts to rank your website better for e-commerce SEO. 
So they're actually looking at the different searches, the original search and the secondary search. Yeah. They're appending those together and saying, we believe that Kazra Dash is a very good result for e-commerce SEO. You followed on to have to do this secondary search and Google kind of says, well, why don't we just put it in the primary search? Mm -hmm. So, and that's in there. Now, people might not be able to understand that because they might not understand what they're looking for. But that's to do with click data. And there's lots of other things like massive shout out to Rand Fishkin because many, many years ago, he came out and said at a conference for everyone to go and search for a keyword that was in banking in position number eight. And while it was there, everyone searched for this keyword and clicked, I think it was his Mrs. Bakery, I might be wrong on that, but to click on to this, and then literally within 24 hours, this what was ranking position number eight, no links, no new content, jumped to number one. Sure. So click data we've known for many years has been like a ranking factor. And Google came out almost with a personal vendetta against Rand for saying this, saying that, oh, it's incorrect, the secondary factors that took play in this, and now we know that it's correct. Yeah. So, like, there's so many things that Google, instead of just, I, reg I would prefer them just to ignore the situation than start saying this doesn't work. And then we find out, actually, it's in the leaks that it does work. So, he here's here's my thoughts on it. Right? And obviously, we, we've heard this before, where Google have said not a single person at Google understands the entire algorithm, which I probably agree with that knowing that there's 14,000 lines of code yeah, yeah. You, you're the only person that's read it <laughs> yeah, no, not really, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, do you think that the reason why they sometimes might disagree with people on twitter and stuff and it's like no that's not a ranking factor do you think that they might not just the person that's running that twitter account might not just fully Poten understand? potentially yeah but like you'd you'd be a little bit more it could be right not there's some definitive no's mm -hmm that now turned out to be yeses. Yeah. And that's wrong. And I feel like there should be, it, it could it could work that way. Yeah. Now, the hard part is then a lot of people just go, going to go Google are just sitting on the fence with every single question. And yes, there's so many different moving ranking factors that do change and update to update. So if they realize mm, the SERP doesn't look very good for this, they might dial relevance up in backlinks more or power up in backlinks more or topical authority up slightly more. So, and people don't know what, what's what been dialed up and what's been dialed down. So they might know, a lot of the Google kind of employees might know a lot of things that influence ranking factors, but not know the weight of it and not know the importance of it. And some ranking, there's so many moving parts, like, all right, well, what's better? Um, doing 100 clicks in Google for searching that keyword and then search, search, searching Kazra Dash versus two backlinks. They're not going to know the difference yeah, of what's yeah, that much better. No imp employee is going to know it until the algorithm works it out mathematically. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So for that reason, like they might know things that can influence certain situations, but no, we're all guessing. We're all second guessing. So here's, a, here's a controversial one. EAT. Yeah. EAT wasn't mentioned in any of the 14,000 lines of code. And I'm saying wasn't mentioned because there's... It, it was people are just being dumb and they're like well eat as the word wasn't mentioned what's what's your thoughts on that so what was mentioned to help with eat like so, you said it was but there was being done obviously like links yeah um topical authority yeah branded search yeah um click data which can obviously fall into the branded search and yeah. an another thing what you mentioned searching for one term yeah. and then going and searching the actual brand that can influence the brand being the primary search so yeah like going through twitter seo which i hate everyone's like eat is not ranking factor what, what's what's your thoughts on that so i would instead of arguing with people because i don't try to argue with people that want to argue whether something is or isn't a ranking factor would a real business do it and will it help your conversions and does it make your website look better and is it having any detrimental effects? And a lot of the answers to them is like, no, it's not definitely not having any detrimental effects. So I just tick all boxes and look like a real brand and make certain that I've got everything set up that I can do. Every policy I can possibly have on the site 
legally that I should have. Obviously, I'm making certain that I've got. But actually, if someone is close to placing an order with regards to two businesses side by side, and you have you score 4.8 out of, out of 5, and I score 4.8 out of 5, we're both £3,000 a month as an SEO agency, I might just go online and search and want to know who who's the team behind this? The, the head SEO yeah. or whatever. Who's, yeah. Who is the head SEO? Who is this person? And I might want to know a little bit more about them, what, what they've done. Some people might like to know what awards that they've won, right? To go, oh, well, these have won these awards. I don't personally like awards, if I'm being honest with you, because a lot of people just buy the awards with the biggest table. But some customers like knowing these, like, what certification have they got? What awards have they won? And who's behind the brand? Mm-hmm. For if they're spending a few thousand pounds a month, who like, oh, I don't know a minute, on this about us page, they've got a graphic designer and a videographer. Oh, I might be able to work with them and work with these and work with them. So just from a user perspective, I want to tick all the boxes for EEAT. How important EEAT is compared to topical authority and backlinks, none of us know. Yeah. So we could sit there till we're blue in the face arguing that it's important or not important, but like you said, part of EAT is backlinks anyway. So like at what you could sit there and I could sit there on, on yours now and argue it's not a ranking factor and I could sit here saying it is a ranking factor. I just want to do it yeah. for the user, which hopefully might mean that I convert more jobs. I want to do it for like returns policies on e-commerce if I'm buying a big product and I want to, I want to know the returns policy, I want to see what the returns policy is. Whether that's EEAT or whether it's just I'm being a customer that wants to know this information, I want to know the information. Yeah, definitely. Do you know what I mean? So just tick the box and basically don't argue with the people that want to say whether it is or it isn't because the truth of the matter is they don't know. So you just turn around and just go, listen, you don't know the algorithm. Not even Google employees know the algorithem. What are you arguing with me for? Just tick the boxes and do all things right. Yeah. Um, and then one other thing that I want to talk about as well is bad links, toxic links. What's your thoughts on that? So this and those are working better than they ever have. Um, there, was, there was always working pretty well when you did a this and and you could see like jumps. Over COVID uh, on unnatural link penalties, they took ages to respond and unnatural links penalties was a nightmare in like going back and forth with Google because just wasn't responding. But after COVID, they've started being a lot more responsive. But in the last three months, a disavow has seen pretty quick results. And Grindstone and a few of us came out with a few case studies where they'd done a disavow and seen good results and good jumps. And then Google just came out instead of like, because they know, oh God, like, they've found something that does work that is removing toxic links where they, if someone's buying links, they want to try and like get them, hit them with regards to like, you might be buying links, but because you're buying some of them that are toxic, it's going to have a, a negative effects on your site. They want to try and penalize those. But if you know about how to remove toxic links and do the disavow, we've, we've got constant graphs going up from disavows. So of course, I think the, the worst position worse than ever for determining what a toxic link is and a problematic link. Um, they're not just ignoring them anymore. So the disavows, in my opinion, are very, very important and we're seeing good results from from doing them. So a, a, a question that I recently got asked is, would you only do a disavow if you've had the manual action removed? No, penalty? definitely not. So, and Google, again, when Google come out saying something, like we've just said, they've lied a lot and then, with the leaks have come out showing actually they've been like the minute grindstone came out with these case studies showing jumps from a disavow only doing a disavow they came out and said well we might get rid of the disavow tool that's just their response to well we might get rid of it anyway they've been saying that for yeah. years but but in response to the prob the, the problematic links like if you can, if you know some of these scraper links that people are getting, and some of these links that they're not actually building themselves that are being sent through to them, not negative special attacks, they're just scraper links. Some of those are the most toxic links that you have pointing to your oh site. God. So if you just remove those to bring your toxicity threshold down, it means you can build more links. Why wait until you've been penalized? Why yeah. not just prevent it? Like, 
if you can do it yourself, just do it yourself. I'm not doing it to sell a product or a service. If you know how to find all of the toxic links using tools like Majestic, Ahrefs, SEMrush Spam Score, and Link Research Tools Toxicity, if you can grab every single one of them, going into Google Search Console, extracting all of your links, putting it in, using a link simulator for what the power is and what the trust is and what the toxicity is, and getting rid of the least powerful, least relevant, and highest toxic links, just do it yourself. Yeah. I actually um, had a recent consultancy with somebody that had been hit by the HCU. And I actually sent you it. But basically, the, the scraper links that we've just been talking about, it's not actually even a, a links problem sometimes. But sometimes some of these websites are scraping like your page title or your H1 and maybe like the first 200 words of your content. And I don't know how the, these aggregator or these scraper sites are doing it, but they're actually picking up your content getting their page indexed first prior to your page's index. So it looks like you're actually got duplicate content. Yeah. So it happened to a lot of ours. This is why I've just recently invested in an indexing tool. Right. I want to make certain that if I'm buying a guest post or buying a, a, another big one, if I'm buying a niche edit, even though it's already indexed, I want to load that into my indexer. Because I want to go, well, it's already indexed. I want Google bots to come back and Bing bots to come back as quickly as possible to pick up the link that's been put into that article. I want it picked up straight away. But every new article that's getting done, I also want to make certain whether it's a guest post or whatever, it's getting picked up straight away. And on my site, yes, I've got the Google Search Console API, but sometimes it can still take 12 hours to get picked up. Put it into an indexer, could, could get picked up within 10, 15 minutes. Get that page indexed. Because these scraper sites, that's what they're doing. Yeah. And they're actually nicking your traffic and your content and you're seen as being the duplicated content. There's other ones where it's not being seen first and your page has been indexed. And because the amount of scraping that they're doing and the internal linking that they're having on the site, with regards to link inversion, they're seeing their scraper site, which is terrible, to be more authoritative than yours. Yes, yeah. Even though it's indexed yours a month prior and theirs is a month later, it's saying because of linking version, people prefer this than that. You then become being duplicated to that as being the unique one, even though they're new, they only seen that a month afterwards. Yeah. So just sort it out ASAP, like it's and then another one that was mentioned, and we'll, we'll probably deep deep dive into um page rank as well, but um crawlability of the website. Uh, which then leads me on to PageRank. There was four or five PageRank algorithms, yeah. like different ones. Obviously, there's one for like how important your website is, um, and there was also one for like the, the overall crawlability of your website. Um, but yeah, what, what's what's your thoughts on that? What was interesting there was one in there with regards to click data alongside PageRank, and it was in it, the way I read it, and I might be wrong here, right? but this is what we do a lot of with regards to the traffic, is it felt like it was saying, but you, I needed to re read between the lines, that if the page doesn't have enough authority, we won't send page rank through on the links. And whether that's traffic or internal links or tier twos or whatever it is, if that page doesn't have enough quality signals, it just neutralizes and doesn't send the page rank. So you're and it mentioned click data within it. So you're telling me that if, let's say, I've got a page on my website called Best Running Shoes, and if I was to build a link through to it, that wouldn't pass power? Is that, wouldn't is that... pass any power unless the page that's linking through to your page had some sort of signals. Ah, the guest post The has, guest post right, had some okay, sort of signals. Whether that's... An internal link from another page on that guest post site, tier two backlinks going through to it, social signals or traffic. Now, they didn't they didn't mention these in the in the Google leak, but it was they was talking about neutralization of page rank, and we'll only pass it when we feel there's need to pass it. I see. Right, and okay. and but it kept mentioning click data. That is quite interesting. And I mentioned Google Chrome quite a lot. That they do use Google Chrome for click data, which is right, interesting. Okay. That, that's quite interesting because there's a lot of 
Swedish gambling sites. Yeah. I won't mention which ones, but you'll probably be able to search them up and find them. That do a lot of tiered link building. Um, a lot. Like for every single guest post, they might do five or ten tier two links. Um, and same goes with niche edits. Um, one of the one of the gambling sites actually uses your indexing tool um, yeah. to recrawl niche edits yeah. to then essentially make Google aware that, hey, there's a new link on this page, go and crawl it, pass the page rank through to the website. So that would make a lot of sense um, yeah. if, if they are. Is there out. anything in there in the Google leaks that's made you think anything's going to, you're going to change anything? Or is it just kind of reconfirmed? So there, there, there definitely was a lot of com uh, bias confirmation. Um, a lot of things where you're a little bit uncertain of and you start reading it and you're like, ah, oh, right, okay, that makes sense. Like the exact match domains. Um, they, they obviously have got a classifier for e-commerce sites, so they, they understand whether it's an e-commerce site or not. Um, one of the biggest ones that I thought was, that was pretty important, um, and I don't remember the specific wording for it, but how I read it was you need to be seen on various different sources. So forget Google, yeah. but... Have you got social profiles like a LinkedIn, a bona fide LinkedIn, bona fide Twitter, um, all the trusted sources like that? Are you seen on YouTube? Because again, that helps with the knowledge graph as well. Um, if you're yeah. trying to get like a, a knowledge panel, and again, going back to, to the EEAT side of stuff, if somebody searches my name, they'll see like a big photo of me, they'll see my website, they'll see all my social pro profiles, pretty trusted face within the SEO space. And I think that that will help with any site yeah. um, going forward. What, what's, what's your thoughts? Yeah, I completely agree. I mean, it's not, regards to the Google leaks, it's not really turned around and found like, oh my God, there's a knowledge bomb. I didn't know that. But there's just so many things, like you said, that Google will come out saying no, and the answer is yes. And yeah. then there's just things that I'm like, okay, I might, I might go back to retesting some of that. Mm -hmm. That I thought was like a ranking factor and I did some testing and it wasn't conclusive so I just kind of everyone's saying it's not so I left it and there's certain things in there that I'm like oh that's quite interesting yeah. but it's like w without digging too deep in the semantics like they've gone crazy in that group so they there's so many things in there talking about SPOs and semantic triples and saying that the dent so one of them was um, in the Google leaks was talking about the content length Right, okay. And it says content length is not a ranking factor. Where so many people came out saying, generally speaking, that the longer the article means the better you rank. And here's these studies that show that the longer the article, the better that you rank, right? And they've, they've, in the, within the leaks, it says content length is not a ranking factor, right? But what they did say is that the tokenization versus content length, so how dense how many like entities have you got within the size of the content's important? So removing fluff and contextless words is key. And trying to get as many, like almost like the Kyle Roof scenario, trying to get as many entities as you can on the page without doing it within 10,000 words. If you can do it in 2,000 words and get all the main entities on and it's quite dense in the way it is, that's much better than them having to crawl 10,000 words. But instead of just using entities, they use semantic triples quite a lot. So trying to get the subject, the predicate, and the object in mm -hmm. the sentences. And there's certain GPTs that people have been meant like been making now on the back of the Google leak. Right, okay. And also there's certain leaks that's happened with regards to how they do the SPOs um, for to being able to create quick topical maps. Yeah. That's, that's the interesting, interesting with like topical titan and stuff like that that there's certain stuff that people now can start doing that's like ah never thought of it being done that way do you think that this could be potentially harmful for google because obviously they've just given away 14,000 or somebody's given away 14,000 lines of code they've obviously just released google um overview the 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 ai answers and that, that's SG. Been, it's not called SG. I think they call it Google Overview. Right, okay. Uh, um, and obviously, have you seen some of the answers? It's telling people yeah, to yeah. like eat glue and stuff, right? But do you think that potentially with these leaks, it could come in for like as a positive for Bing and be like, 
right, we're going to implement some of these. Or... I do, f I do feel sorry. For, if I'm being 100 percent honest, I do feel a bit sorry for Google because everyone's everyone's against them, right? It's easy. It's information bias. It's easy for us to turn around and say, "All right, there's some answers out there that says eat glue," right? But for every one of them, there's probably 99 great answers for people, yep. right? But everyone's then just jumping on the bandwagon of finding these few wrong answers. Some of these wrong answers might have been a good answer initially, and the SEO's gone in and changed it and then took the screenshot. Or some of them just so tweak the page and just like tweak the SERP that's not even <laughs> not even true of what Google is showing. So, so some of them have been Photoshopped. Yeah, you know what I mean? So yeah. some of them have been Photoshopped. So like everyone's got to be in the bonnet because they are up there and the pedestal has been the number one biggest search engine mm -hmm. and everyone's just trying to knock them down. They are trying, I do believe they are trying to provide good quality content for users. I do believe that because if if I was sat there in the board of directors within Google and I'm a shareholder within Google, right, and I want to get the most out of Google, for me to keep earning money via ads, people have got to keep using it. For people to keep using the search engine, it's got to be the best search engine. So they've got to do things that's good for the user. So for that reason, fundamentally, as a business, you want to do what is best for the user. Now, sometimes what they think is best for the user, SEOs despise and hate. Yeah. But is it best for the user or not best for the user is debatable within SEOs and within the users. Yes, they could sit down and people could hate me for saying it, but a lot of the SEOs just want to hate on Google no matter what they do. So, like, is it going to harm them? Maybe. One, one, one. But the truth of the matter is the person who's geeking out the most on it are all SEOs. They're trying to geek out so they can manipulate the algorithms where Google's are like, we don't want you to manipulate the algorithms. All we want you to do is provide good quality content for users. Now, I sound very white hat when I say that, but you... That's what people. That's what they want you to do, and yeah, and there. That's what they want you to do, and just provide good quality. Like, if you provide the stuff that users want, or you provide good quality data, people will actually link to you. Now, obviously, I'm a big believer that you want to try and give it that boost, whether that's traffic or whether that's guest Thanks. posts and niche edits and, and build good quality content. But like the internal linking and stuff like that. Try to do internal linking, not just because Screaming Frog tells you to do it. Think of what the user might want to also know from that page and might want to click through to. And if they can visit multiple pages and the dwell time on your site is good, you're going to be rewarded for it. Yeah. Google are trying to do these ranking signals for what they think the users would want. So they're looking at nav boost and click data and how many pages that they visited and time on site. Why? Because th that information is providing information to Google that people have liked this website. Yeah. So too many people are just obsessed with trying to cut corners. Like, I, I, and for that reason, sometimes I do feel sorry for them. And I know it's, and it's like, I probably because they've made me a boatload of money over the years, like by me being able to rank within Google search. And maybe I've got a so bit of a soft spot for him, but I don't feel they can do any right for wrong. Mm -hmm. Like, what well, one thing that was obviously mentioned is that <clears throat> with the Google AI overview or SG, if you want to call it that, is that it's going to steal clicks. Now, I don't know if you saw Ryan Stewart's case study on it, but it basically was like an answer, and then it had free websites, and the free websites was actually getting more clicks than what it would have before, because obviously if you think of it before, it was in position one, one, one two, three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So th that, that was quite an interesting one. And then... Um, is there anything in the code or the leak that you saw that you've prior to the leak being happening that you were like, that's not a ranking factor, but now you're like, ah, oh, that's that's interesting. So Corey's methodology at times can be a bit like confusing. Yeah. And it can be a bit like, is this really important? And then when you start to realize how many times it's used in semantics, like the SPOs, I'm like, Oh, this is very important. Yeah. Like, no, you don't. You can't tell the weight, but the amount of times that it's been used in lots of different parts of it. I'm like, oh, okay. Now it must be very important, like what he's saying. Mm -hmm. So there's that. Um, obviously, 
page rank or whatever you want to call it, link juice, whatever. The, is... the thing is, with page rank, a lot of people thought it was a done deal. People like th- there was people after I had done a talk. There's something in there that says that page rank within it wasn't pa- called page rank. It said it's been replaced with new rules. New rule. I can't remember what it was. There's yeah. something in there that said something about page rank being replaced with something new or something. But it basically still means link juice. Yeah. But they've not the they this obviously we all know, like but not only that is you've got also got to look at the way let's say core's methodology about topical authority. Links to your sites here, links that are all pointing to your site are almost still part of your semantic content network. Mm-hmm. So the more places on the internet you can be spoken about and linked back to you, the more spiders that are coming back to your site, then the better it is. So everything just kind of comes back down to it. It's dead easy for us to sit down and go, oh, so it's just built on content and links. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But yes, there was elements within it that was like, oh, might need to pay a bit more attention to that. The one that was good was which we already knew, but there's one or two other bits that we're going to test out now that was to do with traffic. Mm-hmm. So how important traffic was from click to pogo sticking and stuff like that and click to other pages and stuff like that. So we're going to, there's, there's a lot about click data. Right. And I think it all, again, just comes down to the user metrics. Are the users having a good user experience? How does Google detect whether they're having a good user experience? They're having to use that data for the best of the ability. Just because a site's got 10,000 backlinks doesn't mean that it's great if everyone's set, staying on it for five seconds and bouncing. So they're having to use that as well as links and good quality content. Combine it with everything else. Combine it with everything, yeah. yeah. But I still, to be fair, mate, it's still run. They say new, it's been out like a week or so, but like... I think there's more going to... There's going to be so it, much yeah. more coming out of it that people are like geeking at it. It's funny because I'm in like so many different testing groups and like the semantic group are all geeking out on the semantic triples and they made all these tools and it's like, oh my God, this is the best thing ever. And then these are like, oh my God, it's the best thing ever for like traffic and engagement and behavioral signals. Look at all this information that we have. So like the testing team has just gone mad. Yeah. Because like they've got all these different kind of tests now to run to see what what weight it has. Mm-hmm. They're saying it's part of, and it, it must be because it's obviously, well, unless Google's just leaked it on purpose to send people that way. <laughs> Um, but the, we're now testing all these elements to see what weight is behind it. Because if if there is something and it's like not point not 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 one percent increase, it's like oh, the money involved in doing that. I'd build more links. Yeah, <laughs> do you know what yeah. I mean? Like we want to do things that's going to give us the best bang for our buck. So let's do the testing and see what what comes out of it. But that's going to take a good few months yeah. to see what comes of it. This is why if anyone's not in any not attending conferences or masterminds or they're not in like subscribing, let's say Kazra's YouTube channel or in it, certain groups and certain cohorts, I strongly recommend you doing it because a lot of these people, they're becoming better and better and better at SEO because of the networking that they do. And when they're looking to network, they're elevating each other. They're all sharing test data of what's working in today's algorithms. Sometimes I'd say forget the conferences because some people are going up on stage and just rehashing what they heard five years ago from what somebody else had said. Go and get yourself in the masterminds. Kazra's actually got one called themasterminders.com. Yep. Go on to themasterminders.com. Check to see when the next event is. Sign up to it. Guaranteed to be the best, one of the best things that you've ever done. Yeah. Anyway, away from that, let's go back to Google Leaks. <laughs> <laughs> I went off one on there. No, I, th- I, think, I think that's it. Unless there's anything else that you... Was there anything, what was your main... Was there anything in there on yours with the Google Leaks that you thought? I, I, to be honest, I, I was just smiling at the fact that Navboost was mentioned. Because yeah. I, I, I was genuinely like, I don't know anybody else that had mentioned it. There was obviously yeah. a couple um, pages live on it, but there'll be tons of pages live on it now. Yeah. Um, I, I think that was that was the main one for me. Yeah. Um, yeah, click date is going to be important. There's going to be a lot of testing. If anyone wants to know any of the results, drop a message in the comment section. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I'll try and answer it. It might be a couple of months yet before we actually get any bona fide data. Apart from sometimes click data can be done Very within quickly. 24 hours. Yeah, it can it can be pretty quick. So to run with it anyway. So there's there's a lot 
going out that will quite die as well. Yeah, so that's been the video on the Google leaks. Um, if there's anything else that you guys want us to cover, make certain to leave a comment down below. Thanks. Cheers.